in the year 2009, a little game called Batman Arkham Asylum was released to the public, and the world of superhero video games was changed forever. Gone were the days of mediocre movie tie-in films, as we were exposed to the start of one of the greatest Batman stories ever told. The Arkham Trilogy is something that is near and dear to my heart, as I'm sure it is with many of you. From the beautiful beginning in Arkham Asylum, to the masterpiece of storytelling that is Arkham City, all the way to the visual spectacle and satisfying conclusion that is Arkham Knight, it is safe to say that the Arkham Trilogy and even Arkham Origins consist of four Four of the greatest, if not the greatest, superhero video games ever made. And in the year 2015, we all said farewell to this beautiful franchise for the last time. As Bruce Wayne said goodbye to the cowl in Gotham City, faked his death, and lived on in Gotham only as a myth. Truly a beautiful conclusion to an amazing Batman narrative. Well, at least we thought that was the conclusion. Until Warner Brothers decided to make this. I don't typically make videos like this, and to be quite honest with you, I don't even know what channel this is going on. But I have so much to say about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and how disappointed I am with Rocksteady for what they attempted to do here. I have to get it off my chest. I wasn't even going to play the game, and I'm actually a major hypocrite for doing so because I said I wasn't going to, but you know what? Sue me. The Arkhamverse is very, very important to me, and if this ship is sinking, I'm going down with it. Before I get into the nitty gritty, I do want to point out a few positives with the game because though I'm mostly pretty disgusted by what we have here, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have at least a couple of good things to say about it. For one, the face models and voice acting are all top notch. This game is at its best when you're not actually playing and you're watching a cutscene. It's very obvious that a lot of work and effort went into the cinematics of this game, and that's something I can appreciate. There's a lot of traces of the old Rocksteady here. When the game first started, I actually found myself pretty intrigued by the story and what was going on, specifically because it was visually a pretty nice game to look at. Obviously, that intrigue turned into resentment later on in the game, but it definitely wasn't because of the visuals. I'd also like to point out how well done the character designs were for the league members. Wonder Woman looked amazing. Jon Stewart looked amazing. Superman looked amazing. Would have been nice to see them and, you know, um, an actual Justice League game. And then, like, this is a, a bad, this is a sick Arkham Batman design. We could have had, like, just a Justice League game with these, with these characters and these designs, but we're not. Instead, we're getting a, a looter shooter. It just, it's, it just, it's, it hurts me. The chemistry between the squad members was also pretty good. The comedy could be pretty hit or miss, but there was a lot of dialogue that did make me chuckle. And where the hell did Boomerang go? Don't worry. He always comes back. <laughs> King Shark was definitely the standout as far as comedic relief goes, even though it was blatantly obvious they just wanted him to be Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, but hey, I'm not knocking him for it. The movement and gunplay is also pretty satisfying, I can't lie. It's funny because I'm going to be talking about the gameplay loop in the cons as well, but on a surface level, the gameplay actually isn't bad. And this is coming from somebody that doesn't really play a lot of shooters anymore. And lastly, the game runs more than okay on PS5. Smooth 60 FPS, I had had no weird glitches or technical issues or anything. For what it is, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a pretty polished game that runs well. But unfortunately, even turds can be polished. And I'm about to spend the rest of this video, however long that is, ripping this turd sandwich to pieces. But before I do, I would like to point out a couple of things to keep in mind before typing out that angry comment I'm sure some of you will be tempted to type. Number one, it's okay if you like this game. Everybody has their thing they enjoy, and there is an audience out there for looter shooters. Some people enjoy the repetitive gameplay loop of looter shooters and the entire formula of a looter shooter in itself. That that is okay. I'm still going to give my opinion on why I personally think this particular game is a mediocre attempt at that formula, but if you enjoy it, more power to you. I actually envy you because I love this series so much, I wish I could enjoy this game. And number two, I know what I say in this video will probably be pretty harsh, but keep in mind, most of it is going to be directed at the suits and ties at WB Games. A lot of people worked very hard on this game at Rocksteady, and I would never want to discredit that. 
that. Though I think some horrific decisions were made with the direction of the narrative, and I will be vocal on that, I am very aware that most of the flaws in this game were probably out of the hands of the men and women sitting at their desk just doing their jobs. So yeah, just wanted to get that out there. Don't hate me. Let's get into it. I don't even really know where to begin, but I guess I'll just start with this. This game is foundationally flawed, meaning Rocksteady's decision to make a live service looter shooter as a continuation to a series that is known for being a single player narrative driven experience was the wrong decision. They could have made the best looter shooter in the history of looter shooters and it would not have mattered. It still would have been ripped to shreds because you failed to make the game your fans wanted from you. So Rob, are you saying that developers can't branch out and try new games and genres? No, of course not. Rocksteady deciding to make a looter shooter was not necessarily a problem in itself. But do you know what is a problem? Connecting said looter shooter to a universe that was concluded in a beautiful way almost a decade ago. It is so painfully obvious right from the jump as you start playing that the only reason this game is connected to the Arkhamverse was because WB Games wanted to try and piggyback off the success of the Arkhamverse. If you want to make a looter shooter, then fine. But don't make a looter shooter and try to nostalgia bait your old fans into buying the game as well. Because all this resulted in was pissing off those fans that have supported you for over a decade. And that's going to lead me into my next point, the narrative. This entire story doesn't make sense. If it wasn't connected to the Arkhamverse, it would make more sense, but it is and it makes the entire narrative feel forced. Bruce said goodbye to the cow at the end of Arkham Knight after the world finds out his secret identity. He fakes his own death and lives on essentially in spirit. And the final scene of the game can really be interpreted in several different ways. But you know one way the end of Arkham Knight can't be interpreted as? Bruce going through all of that, faking his death, saying goodbye to the Bat family and all of his loved ones, saying goodbye to his entire old life, all for the sake of protecting God. Gotham just for him to say, yeah, screw it. I think I'll just come on back. You know, <laughs> who cares? The world knows that Bruce Wayne's Batman. <laughs> it is so unbelievably out of character of Bruce Wayne based off of what we know about him through the trilogy. And, and quite frankly, it's just it's lazy storytelling. It makes not only Arkham Knight, but the entire journey and character development of Batman in the trilogy completely obsolete. None of that even matters now. If you don't believe me, just listen to this dialogue between Batman and Catwoman real quick at the end of Arkham Knight. You're not playing at all. No, I'm not. Not anymore. And what's that supposed to mean? It means this is the end, Selina. It means we can. I can. I will see you again, right? No one will. Gotham needs something more something worse to defend her she needs a new myth a legend more powerful than i can be right now a legend that can only rise from the ashes of the batman some things you can't do alone bruce and some things you have to Call if you need me. I won't. And now, listen to that same Batman in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League just a few years later. Before, I had allies, but I thought I had to push them away to protect them. Now, as part of the Justice League, I'm grateful for my companions. Because together, we are stronger than we are alone. It just doesn't feel... It feels weird, man. It feels weird knowing that that's supposed to be the same Batman from the end of Arkham Knight. This feels so forced. Like that Batman from the end of Arkham Knight, that Bruce Wayne would not, he wouldn't have come back in this way. And just, yeah. Yeah, I'm Bruce Wayne and I'm Batman. Yeah. I'm back. Yeah. Like, dude, give me a break. Bruce Wayne, the Batman, continues far from the mean streets of the city that made him. This just feels so forced, man, this entire narrative. This feels like they picked up from here just because they knew they could piggyback off of the success of the Arkham trilogy. Like it had this live service looter shooter had to be connected in order for them to capitalize on it, especially for it to happen off screen between games. Uh, Bruce just decided to come on back and 
wear the suit again and wear like it. And I already know what some of you are going to say. Rob, it's called character development. Yeah, I understand that. But that level of character development that contains that drastic of a change of heart cannot be done off screen. It only comes off as lazy and that is the entire issue. It is so blatantly obvious here that they just wanted to dig the Arkham Trilogy up out of the grave to try and save any chance this game had of not being a flop. I mean, the nostalgia bait throughout this game is unbelievable. What the hell is this unauthorized transmission all about? Oh, God. But hey, let's just put Orkham Batman to the side. We don't even have to talk about him anymore. There's so much more about this narrative that feels forced. Like, I don't know. Let's start with the entire concept of this game is just stupid. I don't know how much simpler I could put it. You have the Justice League, right? A Themyscaran goddess, a Kryptonian, a Lantern, the fastest man alive, and freaking Batman. And they all get brainwashed by Brainiac. So now you, the Suicide Squad, a bunch of B-list supervillains that nobody even knew who they were before the year 2016, are tasked with terminating the League one by one. And your plan for doing this is... guns. Lots and lots of guns. You want to last more than 10 seconds against the League? Cobblepot's been running anti-meta weapons for years. I want him recruited and brought back to the Hall of Justice. So you're going to fight the Justice League. Hall of the With guns. Like, that's the... I'm sorry. Green Lantern's the only thing between us and that skull ship. But you're nowhere near ready to face him. That's why your support squad will be working double time to get you four kitted out. We're even skipping the safety rags. Yeah, that's the answer to defeating the Justice League. Bigger guns. It's lazy. Having to build the entire narrative around the looter shooter gameplay loop makes everything feel forced. Arkham Batman's involvement in the story is forced, and the entire premise of the story revolving around the Suicide Squad using guns because it just had to be a looter shooter because, hey, we want to make money like Fortnite. It all feels forced. Maybe if the game wasn't a looter shooter and it wasn't connected to Arkham, maybe we wouldn't have such a load of dirty stripper underwear here but man this game just has an identity crisis and it doesn't know if it wants to be a narrative driven game or a looter shooter and that pretty much just resulted in a lackluster narrative that feels forced because it's built around guns and looter shooter elements while also not being a very good looter shooter either but even taking the forced parts of the narrative out of the equation a lot of the decisions they made with the story of this game is just bad storytelling the second half of the game is quite literally abysmal storytelling i could not believe my eyes with some of the decision making here. But you saying I can't really makes me want to, you know? <laughs> no! Harley, no! no. Worth it. Is sexual I, I assault I I funny? Like the entire Poison Ivy sequence, knowing that Ivy sacrificed herself to save Gotham and Arkham Knight just to have Rocksteady do her like this. What are they doing? Arkham Knight, like Ivy's just sacri her sacrifice, the beautiful ending to a, a great character arc over three games. And this is what, this is sad, bro. Like I said previously, it really sucks because the league is so well designed in this game and all the voice actors did such a good job. I just wish we could have got them in an actual Rocksteady Arkham game instead of a looter shooter. I'm still upset that their designs are so cool, but they're going to be used in a looter shooter instead of an actual Justice League game. But let's put the narrative to the side. It is what it is. Let's talk about what a lot of people bought the game for, the gameplay itself. I mentioned while I was going over the positives of the game that I actually quite enjoyed the gunplay and the movement. And I did for about 90 minutes. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has some of the most painfully repetitive gameplay I have ever experienced in my life. Every single mission is basically the same exact thing every time. Shoot purple dudes for like 10 minutes and then bam, Apex Legends loot box shoved in your face with a green gun inside of it. Okay, whatever. Did I get an heirloom? Did I get an heirloom? I hope I get Bloodhound's heirloom out of this one. 
Ah, man, maybe next time. That's literally the entire game. You have to suffer through the same missions over and over and over again for like an hour at a time just to get like five minutes of cutscene and story. Then another hour of shooting purple dudes. Like I want more story, but I feel like I'm having to go through just like hours of repetitive missions over and over and over and over again just to get a few minutes of like story. An hour of repetition same stuff over and over and then you get like a little five minute cutscene of what's actually happening in the story and that's frustrating the mission variety is basically non-existent here you have escort missions sometimes you have to save hostages and take them back to safety and then there's these tower missions where you have to kill purple dudes to get crystals and throw them at more purple shit dude i really don't even know man i don't even know what's going on i think the fact that i have zero clue what's actually going on or what i'm actually supposed to be doing throughout each of these missions yet i was still completing them says it all just shoot the purple shit man buckle up squad this place is about to be crawling with enemies why? I just feel like we're like fighting for no reason. Like they just show up when they're ready to show up, like for no purpose other than to have a gameplay loop. There's no like flow to anything that's happening. There's not even enemy variety in this game. They are literally all just purple dudes. Some of them are shielded and every once in a while you get these big brute things, but you fight them basically the exact same way. And I will say this, repetitive gameplay isn't always the end of the world. There's actually a lot of games I thoroughly enjoy that are extremely repetitive. But the issue is that this is a live service looter shooter. Rocksteady has 12 seasons planned for this stinker. They expect you to spend a thousand plus hours playing this. I have a better chance of seeing my Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl at some point in my lifetime than this game has of making it 12 seasons. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets canned after like three or four. You cannot make missions this unbearably repetitive and expect people to log on every day for years to do their dailies. It is quite literally delusional. And oh my God, don't even get me started on the UI. What in the hell just came up on my screen, bro? What was that? What in the Ubisoft Activision Blizzard just came up on my screen? <laughs> all the numbers, I know, right? That's how I feel. Like, what are all these numbers? What do they mean? The numbers, Mason, what do they mean? And furthermore, I thought that with the game being called Kill the Justice League, I thought we would at least get some pretty cool boss fights against the Justice League members. But boy, was I wrong there. You just shoot them with guns because it's a looter shooter. We'll use the flash as an example because they did actually show his footage at a gameplay reveal. So it's not really a spoiler. Not that many people care about that, but you know, I'd hate to deprive somebody of the masterpiece of storytelling that this game is. Flash has two attacks, both of which are very easily avoidable. You counter him and then you shoot him. Yeah, shoot the fastest man alive with guns. And he is unbelievably spongy. I played on normal difficulty and I feel like this fight drug on for like 20 minutes, which is fine for boss fights if they're difficult or really cinematic, constantly keeping you engaged. But that was not the case here. It was just 20 minutes of countering and shooting until he just plopped over dead. Genuinely, some of the worst boss fights I have ever seen, which is unfortunate because I feel like even with all the flaws this game has, good boss fights would have gone a long way. I'm just baffled that this stink pot is $70, man. It would be one thing if it was free to play, but the fact that it's a full price game you can't play it offline because it's live service and they still want you to buy a battle pass and cosmetics man it, it's just nasty work at the end of the day i think i'm just more disappointed than anything i have no doubt in my mind that the only reason this game was made is because you had a bunch of suits in a boarding room at wb games and one of them was like hey, you know what makes a lot of money Fortnite. we should do that too in conclusion suicide squad kill the justice league was a sad attempt to capitalize off of the success that the arkham trilogy once had even if that meant distastefully digging it up out of the grave to make it happen. I just like to remind myself that this is not the same Rocksteady that made the Arkham trilogy. I mean, the two guys that were the head of the studio left before Suicide Squad was even finished. So, I mean, that was a big red flag in itself. But even with that being said, I still want to believe Rocksteady didn't want to make this game. I'd like to believe they pitched a Superman game or a Batman Beyond game, but they were ultimately denied because, hey, Life service, make more money. I don't know, man. I'm not usually this negative and I'm definitely not gonna make a habit out of it. If I don't like something, I usually just say, yeah, that's shit and move on. But I had so much to say about this poop sock of a game, man. I just, I had to get it out. And honestly, if I just prevented one person from wasting their time and money on this, I mean, it, it was worth it. I do eventually plan on platinuming the game. I know a lot of you were wondering after I basically rage quit on stream the other night. I'm contemplating everything.
It's just not worth it, dude. Yeah, sorry about that. I mean, I did unlock every Arkham trophy ever, so go watch that video if you haven't already. But after that, I feel like I have to do this game, regardless of how I feel about it. That's it. Love you guys. Rob Mob forever.